Welcome back to the channel where I go ahead and actually give you my review up front on all new streaming content. And then I hope you stick around to go ahead and actually see why I gave it that rating. Today, I'm going to go ahead and actually go over the review for Netflix's The Decameron. I'm probably pronouncing that all kinds of incorrect. But anyways, in regards to people that are target audience members, for people that are into comedies, especially dark comedies, things that are story based, short stories, all kinds of comedies, tragedies, period pieces. I'm going to go and actually suggest that you watch the entire first season. For those that are casual viewers, you're not really into dark comedies, you're not really into period pieces, but you're just trying to see if this is for you. I'm going to go and actually suggest that you give it a one episode watch. Now, stay tuned and I'll tell you exactly how I came up with those recommendations. Whatever happened to modesty? Excuse me for saying so, but you are deliciously round on my knee. I am plumper than my dress conveys. <laughs> Poor wine, milady. What did you say? Poor wine. The Decameron is a medieval black comedy that premiered on Netflix in July of 2024. The first season consists of eight episodes that are about 50 minutes each. It's inspired by a 14th century Italian short story collection by Giovanni Boccaccio. Boccaccio. If you know anything about my channel, you know my name enunciation is horrible. And I'm about to go ahead and actually further demonstrate that because it stars Amar Chata Patel as Dianero, Layla Farzid as Stratilia, and Lou Gala as Nephile? Nephile? Yeah, I probably murdered that. My apologies to those actors, but they are in this, and that's why I go and actually show the picture and the name so that you guys know who they are. It was a bad plan. You planned things badly. But that's who's starring in it. We go and actually take a look at the story, Care of IMDb. In 1348, as the Black Death strikes hard in the city of Florence. A handful of nobles are invited to retreat with their servants to a grand villa in the Italian countryside and wait out the pestilence with a lavish holiday. But as social rules wear thin, what starts as a wine-soaked sex romp in the hills of Tuscany descends into all-out scramble for survival. So that's the story that we have for this. And as you can kind of tell, it is a a mishmash of various different stories and just a lot contained in there. Now, for me, I'm an uncultured uh, North American uh, person that didn't really study world literature outside of high school or secondary school as uh, some of your other folks go and actually know it. So I didn't go and actually deal with any notable sense. So this is my first time even hearing of the Decameron and uh, all of his short stories, what have you, but it is actually deemed to have been um, a masterpiece on Italian prose. The collection features a hundred tales from perspectives of 10 individuals within the Black Death period. Now, talking about something from back from that period, you're expecting a lot of things to go ahead and actually be based within that period, talking about that time, the devastation, everything like that going on. There. But keep in mind, it is a comedy, right? So going ahead and actually looking at that, you go ahead and actually cover various different things from erotic encounters to uh, tragedies that are framed with wit, comedy, jokes, and life lessons are all contained within these tales. And Netflix has uh, chosen to go ahead and actually show at least eight episodes, probably piecing together some of the tales because I don't know the original works. I don't know how accurate it is to the tales, what they can find. Maybe they could combine story elements. Maybe there's more seasons to go or what have you, but there is obviously a lot of storytelling here in a comical way in a very serious and dark time within medieval times there. Comedy is the most subjective genre of all movies because we all have different types of humor. I mean, you go and actually take like dry, witty, raunchy, slapstick. Um, all of those are different types of comedy out there and there's so many more right but black or dark comedies are kind of one of those genres that it really takes a person to go and actually think about negative types of things or tragedies or appreciate negative outcomes because it leads your mind down to some very uh dark paths that's the reason why it's black or dark comedy so finding humor in that type of thing on there it takes a very different kind of individual to do that now, I've liked a few dark comedies, kind of like Arrested Development, uh, Dead Like Me, or Shameless. Those are comedies that I've actually appreciated. But there's a whole lot more that just weren't really, it, it wasn't for me or what have you. So considering where I'm coming from, I'm going to categorize myself as a casual viewer for this particular series. The reason why I let you know that is I always think that you should always know the perspective of your viewer and take that into account when you go ahead and actually listen to what their opinion is of various different content. So for me, I go and actually watch the first two episodes of brand new content, just to go and actually see if it's worth your time. I watch it so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let's deep dive into this review. After watching the first two episodes of this particular series, 
my, again, my dark comedy thing, I don't have a deep wealth of knowledge of really where to go with as far as comparisons or things of that nature. I can only compare it to either what I know or what I've read um, that other people will go ahead and actually compare it to. So for me, I go ahead and actually kind of feel like this is a Bridgerton or kind of like Queen of uh, Queen Charlotte meets Arrested Development. That's kind of like where I go because it's pure chaos. There's a lot of dysfunction. There's a lot of self-serving people here with different plots or what have you. And it's set in those uh, way back in the day. So that's kind of like what goes in my mind. Probably what's going to go ahead and actually give a little bit more of a reasonable comparison for you is going to be like The Great or Mary and George. So those are the ones that I go ahead and actually are giving you like a frame of reference of what types of shows are summoned to this. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the episodes and kind of how I came up with my recommendations. In the first episode, uh, they really go ahead and actually set up the various different characters and the stories quickly but effectively. Really mean that they, because they have to dive into so many different characters, give you kind of a snapshot of their personalities and what's going to be their motivations. And they give you that really quick offset on there where you know all your characters by roughly about 30 minutes in or so you're pretty much set i mean you're gonna have some developments come in there and throw you a little bit of curveballs but you kind of know what's going on the absurdity of the storylines makes sense in this world but it's very self-involved as most dark comedies are meaning that you're looking at situations of social statuses and people trying to go ahead and actually maintain uh civility for royalty or or their statuses as you know, servants or in, in tiers of in servants and all kinds of different things, right? So the statuses and the storylines that they go on make sense in that particular world. They probably they will not make sense to you as a viewer that's not really familiar with like uh, period pieces and things of that nature. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Um, also, there's obviously various different secrets, motivations, as I said, desires all over the place that really kind of set up some blatant scenarios that you kind of should see coming, but they're there for you to go ahead and actually really kind of piece them together and see who's motivated by what and what's going to intertwine these people's characters of who's going to help who, who's against who, all that kind of stuff. Because again, 10 different personalities, a lot of different things, a lot of different connections to be made. At the end of the first episode, you go ahead and actually get a nice little cliffhanger that isn't really a shock, but it's really good. It springs boards you into the second episode. And I think it gives you kind of a good uh, look at, ooh, I want to go ahead and actually see the next episode. So that's all in episode one. Episode two, we kind of go ahead and actually really right off where we did from episode one, kind of explain how we got there. And it's a good lead into getting to the second episode because the second episode really goes into uh, the storylines going deeper. It's going to start, they, they really hint and let you know that you're going to be also covering topics that are going to deal with gender, uh, sexuality, life stations, perception, mortality, um, a little bit of dabbling into like faithfulness and, and, and righteousness and religion and things like that. And there's so many other things that could be addressed because in this you have, I believe there are, I want to say, is if I can remember correctly, it's seven women and three men in this. Um, I could be off on that number, but in those 10 characters, that's what's kind of going on in here. And they're all different stations. They all have different things going on or what have you. So the intertwining of episode two is really good about setting up so many different storylines and setting up the connections that you can really uh, find out who your favorite characters are or not. And what I really like about that uh, construction is that you don't stay in any one thing too long. So that's kind of like the breakdown of episode one and two, kind of like how it lands in there, things like that. When I go ahead and actually think about breaking things down, it's two different things I really go and actually look at. First is storytelling. So storytelling for this particular series, I'm going to go and actually give it about a B plus. The reason being is that there is a good uh, setting up, setting up romantic or dramatic stories in a comical way is very difficult. It's hard to go ahead and actually draw people into something that's dramatic or romantic, but make it a comedy and make it so that's not too goofy. It's not too uh, crazy and still draws you into the main story or what have you. Um, and when you go ahead and actually switch it back and forth on there, you could easily go ahead and actually go lean too far into the comedy or lean too far into the seriousness and lose your viewer. And I think that's a very, what this particular series does well is it actually is able to go ahead and actually interweave right in between both of those, those feelings, those vibes or what have you. So sometimes serious, sometimes comedic, but always go ahead and actually going in the flow of the system. What we also go ahead and actually get is a very good telling of the characters, their intros, and their motivations. In storytelling, you have to go ahead and actually be very effective at that and make us care of whether it's the good guys or the bad guys or people, interesting characters, the protagonists, the antagonists, uh, major characters, supporting characters, whatever. If you are a good storyteller, you're going to do a lot to say, why do I care about these people? And these writers did do a very good job of doing that. 
actually telling us why and how they got to the place that they are, why these people are grouped together, it makes sense in this story. And they paste it in such a way that you don't have to linger on any one scene too long before you get flipped into another scene, another character, what have you, to refresh your mind and let you go ahead and actually digest what you just saw. And I think that's a good thing in these in, in something like this where you have so many different characters, so many different storylines on there. You want to make it where I spend just enough time to develop and then I move on to the next ones to give you a little bit more story on there intertwined with everything else. So I think the, the storytelling in that is pretty well done. Um, the hardest thing for me is kind of getting over joking about things so casually like there's death in here. It's the black death period within this medieval time. And so sometimes some of the jokes kind of fall flat to me uh, that they're telling. And there's other people I think wouldn't have that problem, what have you. But in the storytelling aspect of things outside of the main writing aspect of it, the jokes of constantly going actually kind of like really looking, being flippant about death and things that are going on around there or the things that are really kind of looked at down as far as like statuses and things like that. Some of that stuff was a little off putting on to me. It wasn't crazy or anything like that, but that's what kind of put me down to a B plus level for storytelling, but overall pretty good. Everyone's dying. Let's dance while we're still alive. You're going to want to see my body move. Obviously the second component for me is acting of, you know, story, even minus the storytelling and the setup or whatever what are the individual actors doing in this for me acting is also a b plus in this one from individual stands everyone was at least decent you know like nobody was horrible everybody was at least decent on there majority of everybody actually really did well with their characters um, everybody had the dual ability to go ahead and actually have the the, the tone of the series is supposed to be serious because they are playing their characters as serious but obviously there's comedy interjected in there and everybody was able to go ahead and actually do those roles and when they were able to inject comedy whether it's pratfalls whether it's looks whether it's the line de delivery or what have you i think they did a very good job on that and i really like that um at the very least you do go ahead and actually smile where there's a couple times where i just laughed out loud because of the absurdity and the way they did that and i think line deliveries and something of this like a dark comedy either either you nail it or it falls flat and they did a really good job of delivering their lines or what have you one of the things that goes ahead and actually happens on there is that the ones that do go and actually, like for me to go and actually get into the A stratosphere of like a dark comedy is you can't really have too many things fall flat. And there were a few ones on there that I was like, okay, that's that goes nowhere or eh, blah, whatever, and keep it moving or what have you. So that's why I get into the A stratosphere because A is kind of like you keep laughing throughout like virtually everything. Even if I didn't laugh at it on there, it would go and actually make me smile. But there was some that was like deadpan or what have you. But still, a B plus is nothing to sneeze at. I really like the acting on this, and I think uh, they did a very good job on this. I will kill you in your sleep, Ooh. and then I will kill myself. Ooh. Misia, you'll follow suit. Yes, of course, right behind you. Last impressions is just, again, for the target audiences, the reason why I'm saying go and actually watch the entire series is because um, you're going to go ahead and actually find a carefully thought out crafted comedy for a person of that really likes dark comedies, what have you. It's set in a difficult period of human existence that you can really see the tragedies and the real circumstances of the time. And that really kind of lends gravitas to the jokes and the humor that are being made. There are enough storylines and actors to care about in the series um, that will have target audiences really want to tune in for it to follow various different characters. For casual viewers, the reason why I say you go ahead and actually just need to watch one episode is because in episode one, you get all the plot points. You get the type of comedy that's being told here, and you really can evaluate if it's for you. You only need one shot to go and actually do that. The production is totally worth giving a one episode watch, so you're not wasting your time by giving it that one episode watch to see if it's for you. And that's what I have for the Decameron, still not sure about that name, on Netflix. Check it out. Giving a lot of drama, a lot of sex, a lot of... <laughs> yeah craziness if you've actually stayed this entire time i appreciate you i really do do me a favor if you like this click like share subscribe um or you could even go and actually look at one of the other videos that the algorithm seems to think that you might like of mine but until the next time i'll holler at you take care of yourself